Hi, my name is Neil Keller. In uh, this video I'll be going over side plank, uh, beginner's version of side plank. And more than just teaching you how to do side plank, this will actually be a video explaining how to feel your shoulders, how to feel your legs, and how to do something I call switch foundations. It's actually a weight shifting exercise that I use as a preparation um, for hamstring flexibility exercises. And I actually use this uh, exercise in my latest PDF called um, Yoga Hamstring Basics. And the idea of this exercise is to actually teach you how to feel when part of your foundation is relaxed and uh, when part of your foundation is strong and how to actually change foundations by making part that is relaxed, strong and vice versa. So rather than talking too much about it, um, we'll get straight, back, uh, straight into it. And the first position is actually with both knees bent, you can have the feet together and I'd suggest having the thighs in line with the torso. So rather than forward, try to move the knees back so the thighs and torso form one flat plane and also have your elbow on the floor. And the first part of this exercise is actually to learn how to feel your shoulder and to use your shoulder and what you'll do is with the elbow on the floor press the elbow down using your shoulder lift the rib cage up and then relax and then initially you might start off with a sudden movement up and down and that's all right just to get a feel for the movement or a basic idea of the movement but then once you can lift your rib cage and lower it then work on doing it slowly and smoothly so slowly press your elbow down into the floor to lift your rib cage and then slowly relax and from the back what that looks like what you can pay attention to is the position of the inside edge of my shoulder blade relative to my spine so as i push my elbow down my spine should actually move away from my shoulder blade and in a seated position what that actually is similar to is moving the shoulder blades forwards so the shoulder blades spread apart and then moving them back and actually it's a combination of a couple of um, it's also moving like moving the shoulders up and then down so moving on to the other side you can do the same thing start with the shoulder relaxed use the shoulder to push the elbow down and the rib cage up and then relax if you like you can reach the other arm up push the elbow down and then relax now another the next part of the exercise so you can switch sides whenever you like so the next part of the exercise is to push the elbow down lift the shoulder then place the other hand on the floor and right now this arm is strong and this arm is relaxed what you uh, can now try to do is make this arm feel strong so push this hand into the floor and as you push the hand into the floor so that, uh, make this arm feel strong see if you can make this arm feel relaxed now make this arm strong and relax this arm so switch again front arm strong relax the other arm try to lift the other arm place the arm back on the floor and then relax so switching sides again if you can't make this arm strong enough to lift the other arm don't worry about it instead focus on gradually increasing the downward pressure with this arm and then gradually relaxing so to start with so going into the exercise in more detail press your ribcage up using your left arm place the right hand on the floor slowly press the right hand into the floor make the arm feel strong um, so it's like you're using your right hand to support your upper body then your left hand can relax if you can relax it completely lift without moving the torso and then put the left hand down make the left arm strong slowly press the left hand into the floor slowly relax the right hand lift the right hand lift the right hand after it's relaxed so that this part of the body doesn't move now press touch the right hand to the floor so with the hand on the floor it's actually not part of your foundation while it's relaxed it's not um, part of your foundation but it is touching the floor press the right hand down into the floor so as you add pressure to the right hand it becomes part of your foundation 
Um, so what you can, may feel, you may feel your forearm strong, you may feel the shoulder strong. Then you'll feel this arm ideally relaxed. And then when it's completely relaxed, and how do you know when it's completely relaxed? Just by practicing, you'll know it's completely relaxed when you can lift it without your body, without this part of your body moving. Put it down on the floor, so it's not yet part of your foundation until you actively press it down. Let the right arm relax, lift the right hand, then do the other side. If you haven't already, you can do the other side again. Now the next variation, we're going to add the legs. We'll do a similar exercise switching legs. So for this one, when using legs, I find it a little bit easier to have the elbows straight. Um, if you have wrist problems or if you find this uncomfortable, just do it with the elbow bent again. So for this exercise, you may find, um, move the hand out away from your hips or in. Find a position that feels comfortable where it's easy to use your arm to push your ribcage up. And if after you've lifted up you find your position isn't uh, comfortable, come back down, move the arm as you need to. I have my fingers pointing out. So here again, use the shoulder, press the hand down into the floor, lift the rib cage up. If you'd like, you could even bend the spine. So in this case, I'll be bending to the right. So my thoracic spine, my lumbar spine is bending to the right. So I'm creating an arch this way. In addition, for more stability, roll the upper arm out. So look at the front of my elbow, the back of my elbow. As I externally rotate, the front of my elbow points out to the side. And this, I find, feels a little bit more stable. So keep this action. You can lengthen the sides of your neck if you like. Pull the ears away from your shoulders. If you're not sure, practice for a few moments. Lengthen, and relax, lengthen, and relax. Do it slowly until you can actually feel when your neck feels long. And then from there, the idea, push your knee down. Push your bottom knee down. As you push your bottom knee down, the more you press down, um, the lighter your hip will become on the floor to the point where your hip actually lifts. And then you can use your leg control to lift the pelvis higher. You can reach the free arm up to the ceiling. Spread the shoulder blade if you like, and then slowly lower. So you could repeat that a few times. So relax the shoulder, activate the shoulder, lift the ribcage, bend the ribcage to the side if you like, roll the arm out. Then press the bottom knee into the floor, lift your hips up to the ceiling. Now the next step from here is to lift your left leg, place the foot on the floor in front of the knee, like so. Now from here, you can reach this arm forward if you need to. Do whatever you like with the free arm. Move your hips forwards towards the left leg. As you do so, you'll feel your left leg pressing down with the increasing pressure. Then what you do, make the left leg strong. Press the left leg into the floor to the point that the right leg relaxes. And then try to lift the right leg. Slowly put the right leg down. Pre um, move your weight back so that the right leg presses down then. Press actively, press the right leg down to the point that the left leg relaxes, lift the left leg. Put the left leg down on the floor, move your weight forward. Press the leg down, lift your right leg. Right knee on the floor, shift your weight back, press your right leg down, lift your left, and then relax. Then you can do the same thing on the other side. So one of the reasons that I do it with the knees bent, um, first of all, is to get used to switching foundations as I've just showed you. But also, uh, sometimes I have people when doing regular plank, I like so, they have no, they have no concept of stabilizing the foot to make the plank easier to control. So um, I use this exercise uh, as a way of teaching them how to stabilize both ends of the body, whether it's the arm, or the leg. But anyway, let's do the other side. Well, let me show you the other side again. So here you can move the hand further out or closer in, experiment with whatever position feels best. Use the shoulder, push the ribcage up away from the floor. As you do so, notice the increase in pressure in your hand. So relax. Your hand's still pressing down because there is some weight on the floor, but as, as you lift your ribcage, you may find the pressure increases in your hand or if you like, you can think of it as push your hand down to lift your rib cage. Roll the upper arm out. Now push the bottom knee down. Push the bottom knee 
down to lift the hips up high. You can reach the arm up. So lift the other leg. If you like, you can repeat this stage a couple of times. Show, um, so shoulder, spine, hips, hips down, and then relax. Shoulder, arm, spine, hips, slowly lower down, and then relax. And then the shoulder, rotate the arm, bend the spine, lift the hips, then place the top leg in front of the bottom leg, shift your weight forwards. So to shift your weight forward, move your hips. Move your hips forward till you feel an increase in pressure in the front foot. Then actively press the front foot down, lift the bottom leg. Put the bottom leg on the floor, pr uh, shift your weight back. As you shift your weight back, press the bottom, actively press the bottom leg down so that you keep your hips lifted and then lift the top leg. Top leg on the floor, keep your hips lifted, shift your weight forward. Press the front leg down, lift the back leg. Back leg down, shift your weight back, keep the hip lifted. Press the back knee, uh, the bottom leg down, lift the front leg, and then relax. So some variations, once you are comfortable with shifting foundations, some variations you can play with. Lift the shoulder, rotate the arm out, lift the hips. And then you can keep the hip lifted, lift the top leg. If you like, you can grab onto the knee. And what I'd suggest, start with the leg and arm relaxed, then push the knee away from you. At the same time, pull pull the arm back, so gradually increase tension that way. You can look up to the ceiling, try to open your chest, push the hip up high, and push the knee away from your shoulder. Then if you like, you can grab onto the big toe, use a strap if you need to, reach the leg up, and here again, push, push down with the bottom leg to lift your hips, push up with the foot, push, uh, use your shoulder as well, so I'm expanding up and out away from the floor. Now a variation if you want to warm up to grabbing the toe, sometimes a variation I'll start off with is just with the hips on the floor, grabbing the toe like so, and then from there, this hip moves forwards towards you, and leg reaches up like so. Another way to prepare for that exercise is half moon pose. You can have the knee, standing knee straight, or if you need to, have it bent. Touch the hand to the floor, like so. So this is similar to plank, but in reverse with the, um, it's almost like plank in reverse. And then from there, you can work on grabbing the toe. Another variation is standing like so. So one of the things, so like I said, one of the goals of this is to teach weight shifting um, and that comes useful in, uh, in forward bending because you can use um, both in standing forward bends and seated forward bends you can use the arms to support part of the ribcage so your hamstrings can relax but I'll go over that in another video but um, continue with side plank if you lift up roll the arm up lift the leg other variations you can play with, you can put the top leg on the floor, press down, and lift the bottom leg, you can straighten the bottom leg, and then from there, with the bottom leg straight, slowly press the bottom leg into the floor. You probably won't have to shift your weight back, just press the bottom leg into the floor, make the leg strong. And then from there, make the foot strong as well. You can try lifting the other foot, either like so, grab the knee, or if you like, grab the toe. Yet another variation, and this is one of my, I guess it's uh, more of a fun uh, transition, but also explores ways that you can shift weight and learn to move smoothly. So instead of just doing the regular vinyasas that you might do in the usual yoga class, um, this is a more smoother straightforward transition that relies on weight that it is hopefully more easier to see weight shifting but here again use your shoulder press your ribcage up roll the arm out bend your spine to the side and then lift your hips and then from this if you're lifting leg you're placing it on the floor 
The idea is to move from this position to a standing position smoothly. So in order to do that, you might want to move the leg further closer to the hand. Shift your weight forward till you feel the weight on this leg. Press the leg down so the bottom leg can relax. And then lift the bottom leg. And then from here, if there's still weight on your hand, shift your weight uh, away from the hand until the hand relaxes. And so this is important. If you want to lift your hand, um, relax it first. Shift your weight if you need to. Make the leg stronger. When you feel the hand relax, you know you can uh, lift it up and then you can stand up. And then you can do the same thing in reverse from standing position to go into side plank. Shift your weight to one leg. So now you'll feel this leg is strong. So as an example, my weight's on both legs. If I want to lift the left leg, I'll shift my weight to my right leg to the point where I feel this leg relax. And so this leg can relax even more. I'll make this leg strong. Now I can lift it easily without shifting my body. Then moving into side plank, I reach the leg behind the standing leg to the side. You can start by touching your toes to the floor or the side of the foot. Now bend this leg. And as I do so, I'll lean forward so that my knee doesn't have to go too far forward. So from this position, I'll place the hand on the floor. And then a weight shifting exercise you can do here. So right now my middle leg is strong. If I shift my weight back, I'll make my hand and my leg strong. So this leg relaxes and I can lift the leg. Then I'll put the foot on the floor, shift my weight forward, make this leg strong. Relax the arm and the leg, lift the arm and the leg. Then hand and leg on the floor, shift the weight back. This leg relaxes, so this arm and this leg strong, this leg relaxes, I can lift it. And then from there, I can move into any variation of side plank, or just relax to the floor. So hopefully that was a helpful introduction to weight shifting, or at least got you used to the idea of thinking about weight shifting. Um, and also thinking about stability, understanding how to stabilize or at least getting a taste of making one part stable and one part of your foundation stable and one part relaxed. Um, I've gone over this a little bit quickly and haphazardly, but hopefully if you watch the video again or if you're doing the exercises by yourself, what I'd suggest is practice, once you have the basic idea of the movement, work at doing the movements slowly and smoothly. Focus on feeling the changes that you're creating in your body. So for example, just doing this exercise, see if you can maybe first focus on your elbow. So as you lift your rib cage, see if you can feel an increase in pressure in your elbow as you press your rib cage up. Or another way to improve your ability to control your body is focus on pressing your elbow down. So rather than pressing your elbow down suddenly, Try to smoothly increase the downward pressure of your elbow and you may find that causes your shoulder, uh, activates your shoulder in such a way that you can lift your rib cage up. And you can do the same thing when lifting the hips. So with the shoulder already lifted, you can slowly focus, you can press, um, you can focus on pressing the knee slowly into the floor. So gradually increase the downward pressure of the knee. And you may notice if you focus on feeling your hip as well, as you press the knee down, you'll notice the point You'll notice your hip gradually getting lighter on the floor to the point where it's just ready to leave the floor. Then from that point, you can increase the pressure a little bit more so that you gradually lift your hip off of the floor, lift your pelvis up. And then you can lower it down. And while you're lowering, you can focus on the hip. Look for the point, the sensation of your hip touching the floor. Then from there, Gradually decrease the, pre the downward pressure of your knees so that you gradually relax the leg and then totally relax. You do the same thing with the shoulder, gradually relax the shoulder. So that's what I mean. Well, that's a taste of what I mean by trying to move slowly and smoothly and how you can actually um, improve your ability to move slowly and smoothly and at the same time improve your ability to both feel your body and control it. And like I said, if you cannot going back to this exercise where you're changing foundations. If you cannot actually lift the other arm, don't worry about it too much. Instead, what you can focus on, um, so with your left hand up, with your left hand uppermost, 
gradually increase the downward pressure of your left hand while feeling your right hand. See if you can notice a gradual decrease in, uh, a decrease in tension in your right arm as you press this arm down. Then as you gradually relax this arm, see if you can uh, um, gradually increase the tension in this arm. So right arm gradually stronger, left arm gradually stronger. So even if you can't lift the arm, you're still getting practice in improving uh, strength, body awareness, and body control. And that way you may be able to move smoothly to the point where you can actually lift the arm and lower it. Uh, that's it. If you're interested in a little bit more detail, uh, you can read more in my book, um, I think it's Yoga Hamstring Basics. I've included a link down below. There's also um, a more complete uh, one of the workouts. I've included it on my website as well. And if you have any questions, please use the comment form. And uh, please subscribe to my channel as well. Thank you very much. Namaste.